hello all welcome back and again today i have come up with an amazing project for you so if you are learning a python or if you are learning google cloud or kubernetes so this project is for you so in this project i am going to show you how we can create a cricket score application real time cricket score application using python and then how we can create a docker container image for that application and deploy on the kubernetes engine so stay tuned till the end and we'll see what we can learn from so now let's get started now we'll see how we can develop and deploy the real-time cricket score application on Kubernetes. So we are going to develop our application in Python and then we are trying to test it using the containers and then deploy on the Kubernetes. So let me just walk you through first what are the tech stacks we are using for this project. So we are going to use this tech stack so we will use a Python for our application development. We are using the CrickBuzz API to fetch the real-time cricket data and using that API we will just uh, fetch the raw cricket related data in real time and then we can convert that data into the human readable format and print on our dashboard like our application so then we'll use a docker as like container engine so we'll create a container image for our application and then we'll test that container image if it is working fine locally and if it is working fine then we'll push it to the registry and then deploy on the kubernetes engine okay so we'll be using the kubernetes engine and at the end we'll automate this complete ci cd process where we'll only push our changes and automatically we will we'll build a docker container image from the github repository code based on the latest push and then it will deploy on the kubernetes engine so we are going to use a gke platform that is like google kubernetes engine for this project so if you are aware about AWS or Azure you can use that cloud platform or you can use a simple Kubernetes as well so it's up to you but if you are trying to learn a Python or a docker or Kubernetes so this project will definitely help you out so I'll ask you just stay tuned till the end try to deploy this project if you are facing any issue try to resolve it by your own if you are not able to resolve it just reach me out in the comment section or my email ID I will try to help you out now let me walk you through what the steps we are going to perform in this complete our project okay so first I will just walk you through the prerequisite so we need a Python here Python to be installed in your uh, system if you are trying to perform it on your system you need a VS Code or any uh, like code editor I am comfortable with VS Code so that's why I am using the VS Code if you are comfortable with Intel J you can use your own code editor but we need Python to be installed in your system to test and build our application then the CrickBuzz API we are going to show so I will just walk you through the CrickBuzz API as well so what is CrickBuzz API and how we can use it to deploy our cricket related application using a Python so first we will develop our Python like simple Python program we will develop using the CrickBuzz API and we will try to fetch the data using that API the cricket related data then we will pray with that raw data so currently we are initially fetching only the raw data so which will be in the form of JSON or in the dictionary format so that is the raw data we will uh, fetch first using our Python program and then we'll try to fetch the required information which we are needed on our application okay so then we'll create a python flask application which is a web application so just forgive me for this spelling mistake here so it should be flask not flask so i missed k here so we'll creating the python flask application and we'll try to uh, publish our cricket related data or cricket score on a python web application so we'll test that application locally by running python app.py first if it is working fine then we'll create a docker container image for our application using the docker file so once container image is created we'll test that container image in our system so you can use a cloud shell where all tools are already installed so that is a better choice but I am already working a lot of coding on my laptop so I have already installed a docker python and other tools in my laptop so if you want to create a container image in your laptop so you can just install docker desktop as well so which will help you to create docker engine and uh, start the docker engine and then you can build a docker container image locally as well okay so then I am going to use a GK as I said I am going to use a Google Kubernetes engine for this uh, application deployment so first I will create a VPC the networking part of the Google Cloud VPC and inside that VPC I will create my Google Kubernetes engine and then I will deploy the container image which I created and push to my container registry okay and then on that kubernetes engine i will deploy my container image and at the end i will just try to automate complete ci cd process using the github and cloud build so this video might be 
bit longer but stay tuned if you want to learn from this and let me know if you have any queries okay so i'll just directly now go to the crickbuzz api how we can use this crickbuzz api what is this crickbuzz api so let me go to the crickbuzz api now so i am in my browser now to get more information on crickbuzz api uh, Crick buzz api so just open rapid api first so rapid api is api hub where you can get a huge amount of apis for different categories like sport finance or any travel entertainment related so i'll be using the sports section here and there are multiple apis you can use so you can use live score api to fetch real cricket time data or you can use a quick buzz so i'm using the quick buzz api so let's open this quick buzz api so I am using this API so for this API you have to first register for this API you just need to sign up first so you just need your email ID it won't charge you until you subscribe for the that plan if you are using the basic plan so let me show the basic plan here so here if you are using the basic plan for your project it is like 100 requests per day which is I think more than enough if you are just using your application create and test your application okay and five requests per second so I subscribe to this a uh, basic plan okay you can see the currently subscribe so it won't ask any credit card details or any payment details so you just sign up and subscribe that's it and then go to this endpoint and now the real fun begins here so go to this endpoint and first we'll test it okay so how this will fetch the data so just it test endpoint and we'll see 200 means success it is working fine now you can see body and headers the example response so how the response came here expand all and the data let me just make it big okay so now let me just yeah so you can see this data in this format so in dear premier league 2022 data it is showing so it will show all the data because we are hitting the api matches list okay so there are different different get info get team all the endpoints are there so you can use any so we'll be using the get match list to get the live score data because it will we are going to fetch only the latest match data for here now again go back and reload this page so the main things i want to show you here the required thing for our application is the host and the api key so which we are going to use in our python application okay so here you can see what request it is showing the code snippet you can go under the score snippet let me expand this okay so what it is using this is hitting to this url which is matches recent the header which is passing the api key and the api host name okay so these things we are needed now these we are fetching from this uh, API endpoint how we can do this in a Python so let me show you so just copy this URL and headers and I will go to my VS code now and I have the empty file here so I will first import a request module because we needing this module and request is already installed Mars if you are not installed for you just do pip install request okay and I will just first creating these two variable let's uh, remove this colon and replace with equal to and also correct the intendation because in python it is important okay and now we'll fetch the response so we can fetch the response so response so is equal to request dot get url and we need header as well so we'll just type header is equal to header and we'll print the response code first so so as we printing response it will print only response code so if it is successful it will print 200 else it will prove some 400 related or 500 related error so let's try to run it so let me run python test.py and it is giving an error so let's go back and check again on the api so let me test it it is successful let's again go back to our code let's execute again okay now we can see the response code is 200 but i don't want response code i want the data which we are fetching so let me just do here response dot json Okay, so now it will print the raw data which we need for our application 
and let me execute it again okay now you can see it is printing the scorecard and details for all ongoing or recent matches so you can see this raw data so let me just fetch this raw data in notepad plus plus so I can show you so this is huge amount of data here okay let me copy so you can see this data so let me remove this and this is our data so what we are going to do in our application we are going to fetch this raw data in the form of dictionaries and then we'll play around this data and fetch only the required field okay so that is how we created a python program and we are using this this thing is important we are using the crickbuzz api for our application and we are using the api key and api host here so the same thing we'll do in our python application now let's get one step ahead now this is a raw data but for our application we need data in a well written format in a good format so we can read and print on our web application okay so here let me go to the test.py so which i already created and i just played around the dictionary data and i'm printing the data in a tabular format so let me now execute python test2.py okay and we'll show you now you can see it is looking like a scorecard so let me show from beginning okay so this is a first scorecard so this is I don't want to see this because this is India versus Australia final this is heartbreaking match yesterday and it is showing that scorecard that Australia won by six wicket what was India's score what was Australia's score and same way it is showing for all now we want to print this data on our web application so this is a real time data if I go back and just open a quick buds you can see the similar kind of scorecards and data there okay so you can see India versus Australia final ICC World Cup 23 Australia won by 6 wicket then second match Australia versus Africa that is a second semi-final so let me just go back here and you could see the first semi-final and then second semi-final Australia versus South Africa the same data so this is a real time same data I am printing in through my Python application using the QuickBuzz API now this is what we are doing in our local in our Python code now I want to create this as my flask application so I can deploy as a web application or an internet okay so I already created app.py file here I already created the HTML file here so I'll just go and I will just show you how I can execute this as an flask application okay so I will be sharing this code with you so I don't want to uh, again explain what I am doing in flask because the main part was how we are using the crickbuzz API and how we are playing with the dictionary data that I already explained so this is our app.py which is the same thing we are doing but just we are playing now here we are just printing the two data one is the score and then upcoming matches okay so here I am just using this endpoint like schedule endpoint and here I am just printing the scorecard like matches endpoint so that all details we can get on the QuickBuzz API page like what are the different endpoints available so you can see this different endpoints available here based on that you can face that raw data now let me clear my screen here and just run as a python flask application okay okay now the flask application is running let me just go on the screen okay there is some error now error is because I am using the wrong key let me replace the key so this is my correct key and in app.py I am using the old key so let me replace the key okay and now just reload our application okay and now you can see I just given name like tick capture cricket score dashboard and you can see the recent matches the recent was like Austria versus India final match where we lost with 
uh, six wickets from Australia. Then second semi-final, Australia versus Africa. Then India versus New Zealand for semi-final. You can see all data here. Okay, so I'm just displaying the scorecards here. I am not going in detail how each batsman uh, like created the run, but you can get that details also. But my purpose here is just to create a live or real-time cricket application and deploy it on the Kubernetes engine so you can see now my Python flask application is running and below the upcoming matches schedule is also it is showing okay the upcoming matches it is not showing just let me see what is the issue for upcoming matches and here also I am using the old key let me just replace key here as well and let's reload again okay and now you can see the upcoming matches so the first t20 indonesia versus Kol cambodia is here and then yeah so other matches also it is showing namibia versus zimbabwe the same thing we can see if it is the correct yeah combo cambodia versus indonesia then the same things you can see on the internet or click buzz application as well as we are using the click buzz api so this is how we created our python flask application in python so that's our work done for python and crickbuzz api now we'll go on a next step where we'll go to our kubernetes so if you can use any kubernetes you can go on like amazon kubernetes or aks or i will go with a gke okay so i am um, let me go to the google cloud kubernetes engine here so what first what i will do i'll just create one vpc network so this is my VPC network I will go here and first I will create one VPC network okay let me give the name as like my app VPC subnet I will just app subnet region I will choose US central one okay and IP range I can use this one also it's up to you which IP range you want to use from the private CIDR ranges okay and yeah I need some firewall okay so I don't need these things by default two are there allow all deny like allow all egress and deny all ingress so that two firewalls rules will be there and let's create vpc so if you want to know more about what is vpc how to create vpc you can previously uh, refer my videos okay so app vpc is being created okay my vpc is created now i will use this vpc in my kubernetes engine so what i will be doing i will be creating autopilot cluster here so there are two different types like autopilot cluster and a standard cluster so one standard cluster uh, we can create complex or we can customize based on our need but yeah for this requirement autopilot cluster kubernetes cluster would be sufficient so i will just go next in networking and network i will select app vpc okay node subnet i will select okay so node subnet we have us central one so let me check if we have subnet in our network why it is not showing here vpc app vpc and we have one subnet app subnet in US central one let's go back okay let me check which region we have selected create US central one that is correct FVPC let me reload this page go to networking go back to FVPC 
and now it fetched the app subnet okay because the subnet should be in the same region as you want to create your rest of the things I'll just keep as it is I want to just make it as simple as we can create I'm not going to any advanced setting or anything so it will take a couple of minutes to create our cluster okay let's refresh it okay and cluster is created successful now our kubernetes cluster is ready and available now half of our work is done now what else we need to do again go back to our flask application okay so now convert this application into a container now now i already have docker installed in my uh, system if you do not have docker installed you can use a cloud shell okay uh, let me also use the cloud shell because it will be easier for me as well to push image to the uh, container registry and then fetch and deploy on the kubernetes engine so let me go to the google cloud console and go to the cloud shell open the cloud shell okay and here i will just upload my code so i'll just upload folder and i have code in my local so we'll just upload this complete cricket score app upload so it will take few seconds and my complete files will be uploaded here let me check yeah I have cricket score app okay and now let me first check all files are available okay files are available here now okay so main thing is we have a docker file here so let me show you the content of docker file so it is a very common and simple which we already used multiple times for creating python flask application okay now let me just create a container docker container image from this application okay so i'll just type docker build hyphen t and i already have command here so i'll just copy it completely so i'm just giving the tag for my gcr repo okay and let's enter so it is building the docker image here for my application then we'll test the container locally if it is running fine then we'll push it to the container registry okay the build is complete let me just run docker image ls okay and okay so we created this image so let me try to run it now docker run and i will just use port because i am running it on 8080 port and the image id so it will run container locally and let me just test so here i can test using the web preview so let's check the web preview here okay and our application is working fine here it means our container image is completely fine so now i can push this container image to a container registry and i can use that for deployment So it will push my container image to a container registry here. So let's say fresh. Okay, so it pushed. Let me verify. Okay, cricket app. So our application container image is already available now as we pushed it recently so it will show you just now uploaded just now so this is our docker container image now i want to deploy this image on a kubernetes engine which we created so let me go to the gke cluster autopilot cluster and click on so i am doing it from ui because i want to make it simple so in further videos i will create using the manifest file but everything i am doing it on ui now so let's deploy and i am doing manually for now so i will select the container image and in the later part in the same video 
I will automate it using CICD pipeline okay so here I will existing container image and I will select the container image from the container registry so we have Cricap here and I will create a deployment okay done so now configuration so I will just give the name as Cricap okay, namespace I will keep default same cluster continue and yeah I want to expose it as a service because I want my users to access this application so I want to expose this deployment so I can do it now or I can do it later but here I have option so I will expose deployment as a service so port so 8080 my target port and 8080 container port I will choose and I will service type load balancer as I want to deploy it externally I will deploy it so it will take a couple of minutes so meanwhile I will just pause my video and I will resume once it is deployed completely and then we will try to access the application so I am expecting there are some issues while accessing because we have not created any firewall so if there are any issue and we needed to create a firewall we will create firewall to access our application okay so let's me pause this video for now okay now it is deployed let me go inside the cluster also let me go to the workload and see our deployment is completed successfully or any errors okay this is our deployment so let me open it okay so this is the start for our application okay and now let me try to access it using the service so we can access it using this exposing service option endpoint here so you can see the IP so let me access it and you can see it is running now so as I said we need a firewall but it is working without firewall because when we are exposing as a service by default it will create a one firewall from GK itself let me show you that so 8080 there should be one firewall created during the exposing service operation so let me go to the firewalls VPC firewall and yeah you could see one firewall created for port 8080 source range so anyone from the internet can access this using this load balancer on the 8080 port so now we successfully deployed this container image for our cricket score dashboard application on the kubernetes so you can access it from this endpoint now suppose i want to change anything on my application so suppose i don't want a green color i want something like blue or yellow color or any data i want to change uh, or any format i want to change on my application so what i need to do i need to change my code then again i need to build my container image then again i need to push it to my container registry and then deploy on the kubernetes engine so that is the manual process we followed for now but i want to automate it so what i will do i will just change my code and push my code to the repository the remote repository says the github and then rest of the process should automatically follow like building the container image pushing to the registry and deploying to the kubernetes engine so that process should automatically follow so that we want to automate as a CI/CD pipeline so how we can do that so i'll start doing that now so i will try to automate it so first i will create one uh, github repository for my code so i can push my code there and then i will use the in a cloud build in CICD repository so I'll create one new repository here so I'll just give the name uh, real time click scare app okay for now I will keep this repository as a private repository and I will just create this repository okay so now what I will do I will just first initialize here okay empty repository we have created now now I will just do git add 
git commit in the same code directory pushing code okay there is typo okay and now do git push so it will ask for remote url so git remote so i will use the same name real time click score app okay and now i will copy this part that is url okay now let me do git push okay and definitely it will ask me to choose this okay and it will push now to the recently we created master branch so by default let me reload if it is having master branch or main branch yeah it is having master branch now we can see our code is there so this test py and test py files are not required for building application i just explained you as a python application here now we have created this repository now let's go again back to our kubernetes cluster and i want to automate it so again go back to the deploy and we'll deploy it as a another service let me just delete the workload we have created earlier i'll just delete this and i will start from fresh but just i want to automate it okay so it will terminate in few seconds meanwhile i'll go back to the cluster and i will try to deploy again using the automated way so i'll just go and create deployment new container image now here i will select github it will ask me to authenticate so currently not authenticated authenticate i will continue it will ask github to connect and then i will authorize use github mobile so i'll just authenticate from my mobile as i already have github in my mobile let me verify so it's approved okay and now it is authenticated so google cloud and github can interact and work together now so let me select the repository now so i'll be selecting this real time quick score app docker file it is in the same path so i can just mention this path only or i just simply mention this way let's see if it works because it is in the root directory continue i'll just give you recap name again continue i want to expose again definitely 8080 port target port also 8080 so here you can find the difference earlier i created docker container image by my own i pushed my own now i am just connecting my github repository so whenever any code is pushed to my repository at the back end it will create container image and push to the registry and then deploy on the kubernetes engine so this process will be followed automatically using the cloud build trigger so there will be one cloud build trigger will be created so let me pause this video for some time okay and the deployment is complete now so let's see if we can access our application now okay and this endpoint yeah we can access now let's assume i want to change this background color okay so let me go back and instead of green so i'll go in my html now so this is our automated chd pipeline i will change my code and push only nothing else i will do so instead of green i want white okay so i change it to white so i'll just do git add git commit 
change color and I'll push again so how this automation is working let me show you at the background what is happening now as soon as I pushed code there will be cloud build pipeline will get triggered here so let me go to build so the cloud build has trigger which is based on the github repository branch okay so trigger let me check the history a build is started okay it started you can see it executed 32 seconds back okay here are no triggers so it did not create it so let me go back to our kubernetes plus so i am just retrying it as it gave error previously okay just doing continue as it is fetched correct repository i'll do continue okay this should be a master branch as our github repository a master branch not main continue okay okay so here one thing uh, earlier we missed so we need to create one kubernetes directory and we have to add the manifest yaml file inside that so i'll copy this recommended yaml and i'll create one folder here in our root directory that is kubernetes okay so this should be outside of template folder and in the root directory and inside we need yaml file so i'll just put app.yaml name and i'll paste this content okay and let me now close and follow the same action again continue master branch continue so spelling is correct right let me just let me refresh it okay I didn't push my code yet so let me push this new directory in my github repo then it will refresh okay so let me refresh it now okay now it selected it app.yaml that's perfect let me update it now and now we'll see okay so the automated deployment is in progress now earlier we have a green color it should be changed by white now so it is creating the trigger so let's wait for some time let's go to build and see if any build is in progress yeah one build is in progress so let's go back again so automated deployment is in progress okay now I think it deployed let's check the revision history okay so it's not yet deployed now let's try to make some changes again I'll just add some dummy changes just mention this and I'll try to push my code again <coughs> now it should create trigger go to workload okay in deployment revision history okay it created the new revision now okay so let's check the color now as I changed recently to the white okay it's still showing the green color let me check in my HTML file okay it should be white
okay build is instant progress now build is completed let's go back and check Okay, let me just check in the incognito. Okay, it was my mistake. I was changing in the navbar brand. I need to change in the top bar. So this is here. So let me change it white here. Okay, and it should work 100% now. So let me push code again so it will deploy again so I'm just making code into my changes and building the image and deploying that automation is automatically happening so as soon as I push it will run one build job yeah so let me show you now I'll just go to build so there should be one cloud build job running as I pushed code recently okay so this is running and let me go back to deployment section so the fourth revision should be there now I think third let me check the time so I think yeah fourth revision should be there so this is first second third and fourth the fourth revision should be there once it is deployed I can just validate the color if it is changed okay so build job is completed let me go back here and now here you can see there are three revision let me refresh okay let me retry and now you can see the four revision okay so let's go to the fourth revision which is just recently deployed and I will just go to the end point and see so earlier this current was green so we changed color to other like something gray or white so it should show that okay now it is checked now let me just uh, change this tech trapture cricket score dashboard so I'll just remove this dashboard word now so I'm just trying to show you that I am not doing any kind of manual work on building docker image then again pushing it to the container registry and then deploying on the GK so I just automated it complete CICD pipeline so I removed this dashboard word now okay I just made changes that it should be tech capture cricket score and then I'll again just add commit push and it should trigger the pipeline automatically so the fifth fifth revision go back here and just refresh there should be one cloud build job in running state which is again deploying and building and deploying new container image on the latest code okay so this is running and we can just check back the fifth revision or we can just simply refresh it okay so currently the score dashboard is still here we can refresh in few seconds now this is completed let me go back and let me refresh so you can see I removed the dashboard word let me refresh now okay and now our web page is displaying the updated code so this way we automated this complete CICD pipeline now we don't need to always build the docker image then pushing to registry and then deploy to the kubernetes engine so whole process is now automated you have to just worry about your development code or worry about your like application code so that's it for this video hope you enjoyed this complete project we have seen a lot of things here so first initially we developed our python application using crickbuzz api then we created flask application and tested our application locally then we created a docker container image we tested our image locally and then we push our container image 
to the container registry and then we deployed that on a kubernetes engine manually and then we automated this complete pipeline as a CI/CD pipeline and this complete flow we have automated so thank you for watching this video and we'll see you in the next video